to face. And today we're going to talk about nuclear, we're going to talk about the US and Russia situation, about the treaty and uh, the fact that the US readers of the treaty. And I'm with Alice, and Alice, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, you have been active in, in nuclear for a decade, and, and so how did you end up? It's, it's been a long time. I, st I started in 1987 fighting the wow. bomb, uh -huh. but I was active earlier when the Vietnam War, that's when I became an activist. I was a housewife. Okay. And then years later, my children were grown. Mm -hmm. I went to law school. And I stopped doing any kind of good work, so I was just doing law. Okay. And I see a thing in the law journal that the Lawyers Alliance for Nuclear Arms Control is having a luncheon. Oh, wow. So I said, oh, that oh, sounds let, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can do this. Let me get to so I go to the luncheon. Okay. And I was a good activist. I wound up vice chair of the chapter. I went on the national board with Robert McNamara and William Colby. I mean, I oh, learned wow. everything about nuclear weapons there was to learn. These, they really knew about it. And uh, while this was happening, the Soviets, when Gorbachev came in, had stopped nuclear testing. They had a march in Kazakhstan with this uh, Kazakh poet, Solza, Olza Suleimanov, uh -huh. because the, the Soviets were testing in Kazakhstan and there was so much cancer and radiation yeah. and birth mm -hmm. that they rose up and Gorbachev said, okay, we'll, we'll stop. Get, yeah. So our Lawyers Alliance, we went to Congress. We said, the Soviets stop. We should stop. They said, you can't trust the Russians. Yeah. So That's always been the very this complicated. Is, this yeah. is what they're doing yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, the head of our group, who was president of the Bar Association, very well connected, Bill to win, raised $6 million from his friends, <gasps> hired a team of seismologists, and we go over to the Soviet Union and we met with the Soviet lawyers and the government people and we said, let us put our seismologists into Kazakhstan all around your test site because we want to make sure that you really stopped. And they said, okay. Uh -oh. And we go back to Congress and we say, you don't have to trust the Russians. We have seismology and this is a good, and we stopped it. We stopped it. You know, they had a kicker in there that they were going to do another 15 tests. We stopped that. We really worked. Every time we won, we, it was a step backwards. When we got finally the comprehensive test ban treaty, that was just a moratorium, but that was a huge That's campaign. A yeah. Clinton was president, mm -hmm. and he signed it. He, mm -hmm. The Senate never ratified it, mm -hmm. although Russia of ratified it. Of course. And he made a deal with the weapons labs when we signed this comprehensive test ban treaty. Comprehensive means comprehend everything, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. He had an exception in there for what they called subcritical tests. They were blowing up plutonium with chemicals at the Nevada test site, but it didn't have a chain reaction, so Clinton said it's not a test. Like he said, he didn't inhale, he didn't have sex, and he's not having a test. He's not having a test. And India, you know, they were, when they brought the comprehensive test ban out of the Committee on Disarmament where you needed consensus, mm -hmm. India objected because they said if you don't keep out the laboratory tests and the, comp you know, the subcritical tests, we're not going to sign. And over India's objections, they brought it to the UN, opened it for signature, and India said we're not going to agree to this because they had their bomb in the basement but they weren't up to us and the technology. And yeah. if we were going to go ahead with these new tests, yeah. they didn't want to be left behind. Yeah, exactly. So then they tested six months later. So every time we win, we lose. You know. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's like, uh, uh, and now this is terrible. And this is that was already the problem even with Obama because Obama went. I mean, he went out of the way to re to redevelop. He made a deal. Mm -hmm. He made, you know, he had this little negotiation with Medvedev, who replaced Putin for a while, to get rid of another 1,500 warheads out of our 8,000 that we had. Mm -hmm. You know, there are 15,000 nuclear know. weapons on the planet. Yeah. 14,000 are in the U.S. and Russia. Yeah, it's 90 percent of the right. All the other countries have a thousand like between yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. So we really we're the yeah, big yeah. monsters on the field. We have to no, do it. No, no, it's it. our decision to to do something about nuclear weapons. And the weapons. thing is, what I've I've been studying history, we the United States has provoked every single 
up the, in the arms race. I mean, yeah. just look right now how... Yeah, yeah. No, no, so that's what I want to... Yeah. So, so, it was a treaty between Europe, the U.S., and Russia. Which, which treaty? The INF? The, the, yeah, the short the range. Right. Yeah. But let me go back. Okay, okay. Because when, uh, when we got the bomb, and used it in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we were allies with Stalin, you know, and, and the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. that we fought the Nazis mm -hmm. together. Stalin said to President Truman, turn the bomb over to the UN. We just created the UN to end the scourge of war, and it was gonna be, you know, this wonderful new world. Turn it over to the UN under international control, and Truman said no. So, the Soviet Union got their bomb. They weren't going to be left behind. And then when the wall fell down and Gorbachev miraculously let go of all of Eastern Europe, ended the Soviet occupation yes, without he, a I shot, get, yeah. and he and Reagan sat down in Reykjavik, Iceland, and uh, Gorbachev said to Reagan, let's get rid of all our nuclear weapons. And Reagan says, great idea. So Gorbachev it's says, done. but don't do Star Wars because we had this plan to dominate and control the military use of space. That was in their documents, Vision 2020, dominating and controlling military use of space. Reagan said, we're not gonna give up that plan, so Gorbachev pulled it off the table. And then the other thing that we went back on our word with them, they were very afraid of Germany, East and West Germany coming together and being part of NATO because they lost 27 million people mm -hmm. in the Nazi onslaught yeah, in yeah, Russia. They yeah. took such a beating. Yeah. And uh, Reagan said, don't worry, let East Germany unite United. with West Germany. We we'll take them to NATO. We know. will not expand. Because one agreement, inch to the exactly, east. Exactly, one inch to the east. It's, it's, the story was to not touch Poland and, right. and, and Czech. And, 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 they're and, all in, and they're all in our NATO military alliance and now. now and we're doing NATO. war games yeah. on Russia's borders. Yeah. And then uh, he, Putin tried to make an arrangement with Clinton when they learned that we were going to put missiles in Romania. That was the first uh, thing we started to do. He said, look, let's get rid of the nukes. Let's, you and us, you and I, cut to a thousand each, Russia and the U.S., call everybody at the table to negotiate, but don't put missiles in Eastern Europe. Clinton said, I can't do that. Bush comes in, walks out of the anti-ballistic missile treaty yeah. that we negotiated with them in 1972, yeah. puts, now they're going into Poland. I know, I know, I remember it. I had a friend who organized a protest in, in, in Prague, in Czech right. Republic, because they tried to put a base in Czech Republic, and they got, I mean, in people... You were able to people, stop people, it yeah, in we Czech, were able to stop but it. you couldn't stop yeah. it in Poland. Yeah, or exactly. And then I wanted to read sure. what Putin said about all of this, because last year he gave a, a State a of the Nation yeah. speech mm -hmm. in March, and he said... I will speak about the newest systems of Russian strategic weapons that we are creating in response to the unilateral withdrawal of the United States from the anti-ballistic missile treaty. That's the one that the Bush Russian walked Russian. out of. And the practical deployment of their missile defense systems, both in the U.S. and beyond their national borders. I would like to make a short journey into the recent past. Back in 2000, the U.S. announced its withdrawal from the anti-ballistic missile treaty. Russia was categorically against this. We saw the Soviet-U.S. ABM Treaty signed in 1972 as the cornerstone of the international security system. Under this treaty, the parties had the right to deploy ballistic missile defense systems only in one of its regions. Russia deployed these systems around Moscow and the U.S. around its Grand Forks land-based ICM base. Together with the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, the ABM Treaty, not only created an atmosphere of trust, but also prevented either party from recklessly using nuclear weapons, which would have endangered humankind. We did our best to dissuade the Americans from withdrawing to, from the treaty, all in vain. The U.S. pulled out of the treaty in 2002. Even after that, we tried to develop constructive dialogue with the Americans. We proposed working together to, uh, concern, to ease concerns and maintain the atmosphere of trust. All our proposals, absolutely all of them were rejected. 
And then we said that we would have to improve our modern strike systems to protect our security. And this is what we are using the United States as an excuse that they're improving theirs, so we have to improve ours without ever acknowledging that we were the ones that provoked it. Provoke it there's, the there's another one that we provoked uh, after we boasted about our stocks. Well, be, even before that, Putin went to Clinton. Mm -hmm. Well, I told you about that. Yeah. But then, after the Stuxnet virus, Putin approached Obama. That's when we teamed up with Israel to knock out Iran's enrichment facilities with a, with a computer virus. Mm -hmm and said, let's negotiate a ban on cyber war, and we refused. The United States it. refused, and now we're saying we have to be afraid of cyber war, and we gotta build up. It's just like a giveaway to the military mm -hmm. industrial complex that Eisenhower so, is warmed about. So what could be the consequences now of, of in, in Europe, and, and I mean, it's, it's a big scale, it's terrible. Okay. I mean, we're starting a whole new nuclear arms race. Yeah. The, the good news is that we negotiated this treaty that said nuclear weapons are banned, they're prohibited, and of course none of the nuclear weapon states went along with it. But the U.S. keeps nuclear weapons in five NATO countries. Yeah. We have them in Germany, Belgium, Holland, Italy and Turkey, mm -hmm. and there's huge grassroots movement starting now to, uh, to it. with the ban treaty yeah. that they're illegal yeah. and to oppose it, and that yeah. could put pressure on the United so, States. Yeah, so maybe we can explain a little bit uh, the, the ban treaty, the, the, the angle of the ban treaty, it's for the humanitarian ground. Right, well we had the non-proliferation yeah. treaty from 1970. Mm -hmm where five nuclear weapon states, the US, England, China, France, and Russia, agreed to make, and this was their language, good faith efforts to, for nuclear disarmament. Yeah. And all the rest of the world agreed not yes, to get them, I know. except three countries, India, Pakistan, Israel, and they got them. Then this treaty had this horrible bargain where we would give everybody peaceful nuclear power, so we gave them the keys to the bomb factory. I mean. You know, if they didn't get the bomb, we'll give you peace and nuclear power, which is all the technology you need to make a bomb. And North Korea got their peace and nuclear power, walked out and made a bomb. But that's all. You know, we were afraid Iran might be doing it, but they haven't. Yeah. So that treaty wasn't going anywhere. Nobody was promising anything. And then uh, there was a one that, so we said, look, we have to, uh, but we brought a case to the World Court. It was a huge effort and the court let us down. They said even though the MPT says there's an international obligation to negotiate for the elimination of nuclear weapons, we are not willing to say they're illegal in every case. In the case where the very survival of a state is at stake, we're not well willing to say whether it's legal or illegal. And that gap created the mo momentum for the ban treaty. Well, let's say they're illegal, they're prohibited, they're banned, but you can't have them, you can't make them, you can't. And that's how the ban treaty got going. The Red Cross gave us a big boost. Because yeah. they talked about the humanitarian yeah, exactly. consequences. Yeah. And up till then, yeah. it had gotten very wonky. We yeah. were talking about deterrence yeah. and strategy, yeah. and yeah. it brought it back to the human yeah. Yeah. condition. It's very powerful, it's a very powerful grant. And right now it's 25 countries who have ratified it. Oh, that's it's, fabulous. Yeah, we fabulous. need 50. We need 50. I know. So it's we're halfway there. The road. Yeah. That was uh, on the anniversary of Hiroshima. Yeah, exactly. Year, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for coming. It was it was fantastic. Thank you for okay. Thank Lovely you. to be here. Yeah. Thank you. It was face to face, and uh, please keep watching your news on Presenza.com, and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you.